you're given an array of items, and they could be of any type. They could be numbers, strings, or anything else for that matter. And the problem here is writing a function that takes this array and reorders it in a random way. So in this example, 1 will go from here to here, 0 will go here, and 9 will be here. And you're given two functions to solve this problem. The first one is called rand for random, which gives us a random value between 0 and 1. The second function is called floor, and it gives us the largest integer value that's less than the given value. So for example, floor of 2.88 would return 2. Now when you're trying to solve this problem, you might come up with a big O of n log n solution initially. But try coming up with a big O of n solution, and try solving it in place as well, which means you don't have to create a new array to solve this problem. Now to practice, pause the video right here and try solving this problem within 10 minutes. Here's one potential solution to this problem. We're going to use the rand function to generate a random value for each item that we have in the array. So for example, we're going to generate 0.92 randomly for the value 1, and 0.10 for the item 0. After that, using those randomly generated values as keys, we're going to sort this array, let's say, in an ascending order. So for example, in this particular example, the value 0 will come to the top of the array because the corresponding random value is the smallest among all the random values that we generated. So after that, our array will look like this. Now to sort this array with these random keys, we could use any sorting algorithm. If we use the big O of n log n sorting algorithm such as quicksort, this whole solution would take big O of n log n in time. And another thing to note here is that we need some extra space to store these randomly generated values. To be more specific, we need big O of n in extra space. So is there a better solution than this? Yes, there is, and here's my big O of n solution. The first thing we're going to ask ourselves in the solution is, what should the value be at the last index where 2 is currently? We're going to determine that by picking a random value out of this array, out of all the values of this array. And we might pick randomly, for example, the number 3. And in that case, we'll swap the number 3 with the number 2 so that the number 3 will go to the last index. After that, this array will look like this. And then we'll sort of repeat the process with the second last index. We're going to ask ourselves, what should the value be at the second last index? And we'll determine that by picking a random value out of these four values now because the number 3 is already fixed at the last index. And we might pick, for example, the number 0 for the second last index, and in that case, we'll swap 0 and 9, and the array will look like this. After that, the same thing. We'll ask ourselves, what should the value be at the index 2 of this array? And we'll pick a random value out of these three values, and we might happen to pick the same value that's already in that index, and in that case, we don't have to do anything, so the array will look the same. At the end of this algorithm, we'll ask ourselves the same question, what should the value be at the index 1? And we might pick this value, 1. We'll swap those two values, and the array will look like this, and we're done. This solution will only take big O of n in time because we only go through this array once. And it'll only take big O of 1 in extra space for swapping values. So I kept saying something like, just select a random value out of these four values, but how can we actually do that with the two given functions, rand and floor? The key here is that we want to be able to select an index, 0, 1, 2, or 3, randomly with the same probability, or a 25% probability each. And if you recall, the return value of rand is always larger than or equal to 0, and it's less than 1. And let's just say for simplicity, RAND is uniformly distributed over this section. And if we multiply RAND by 4, 4 times RAND will range from 0 through 4 instead. And let's just zoom into this line, and we'll see that we have again a value that's 0 through 4, and we'll be able to divide this line into 4 equivalent sections. 0 through 1, 1 through 2, 2 through 3, and 3 through 4. And notice that the value of 4 times rand, the probability that that value will fall into each of these sections is equivalent to each other. 
So the probability that four times round will be larger than or equal to two and less than three will be 25%, just like the probability that it falls under any other section. And so we can assign each of these sections into each of the indices that we have right here. So if we get, for example, 2.5 as the value of four times run, we can assign that to two. And if we get 1.1, we can assign that to one. And we can do that with floor of four times rand. And again, this goes to 0, 1, 2, or 3 with the same probability, or 25% probability. And that way, we can choose a random value out of four values. If we want to instead choose a random value out of three values, we can replace this 4 right here with 3. And we can just write floor of 3 times rand. And we'll be able to choose a value from 0, 1, or 2 instead. With that in mind, let's see what my solution might look like in code. We're going to write a function called reorder, which takes the given array r and reorders it in place. So we're not going to return any value out of this function. The first thing we're going to do in this function is we're going to initialize a variable called n to the length of the array. And that's just for convenience. After that, we're going to run a for loop for i starting at the index n minus 1, which is the last index of the array, down to 1, which is, of course, the second index of the array. And let's say, as an example, in the for loop, we're currently examining the second last index. So i is equal to 3 currently. And then we'll need to ask ourselves, what should be the value that goes into that index? And we'll do that by picking a random value out of these four values. And we might pick, for example, this value 0. And let's call that index pick. We'll be able to decide what the value should be for pick with floor of i plus 1 times rand. So if i is equal to 3, we're saying pick should be 4 of 4 times rand because we're picking a value out of 4 values. And after that, we'll swap the value at the index pick with the current value that's in the current index that we're examining. We'll do that with a temporary variable called temp. So we're going to store the current value in the index i, this value, into temp. And then we're going to move the value at the index pick into the current index. And then we're going to put the temporary stored value into pick. So that's my solution. And this algorithm is also called Feature Yates Shuffle or Knuth Shuffle. That's it for my video. And thanks so much for watching.